What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we have something special for you guys. We have a comparison video. So we wanted to show you guys um, what some of our babies look like and then compare those to what our adults look like of the same stuff. So we'll, uh, we'll go through a couple different things and make sure you guys stick around and watch the whole video because we're gonna show you guys the tigers. All right, okay, first let's go ahead and let's do a Kingsville because I feel like reds, uh, they change pretty drastically um, over the course of uh, of them maturing and everything. So let's just grab, it's just one of the babies. This one's a male, but anyways, let's just check him out. All right, so as you can see, I think there's a little bit of orange in there, lots of browns. And uh, as babies, they vary a ton too, so keep that in mind. But anyway, so this is just one of the males from this, uh, this year's clutch. And uh, let's go ahead and grab one of the adults and show you one of those. Action. All right, this is my big Kingsville female. And uh, as you can see, there's a drastic color change from that baby to like what they have potential to look like. And she's not even like one of the reddest Kingsvilles there are out there. There's ones that are way redder than she is, but she is my redder of the two adults that I have. The male is not nearly as red. Um, she <laughs> is a pure Ginter line, Kingsville. And my male is actually a John Cherry Ginter cross. And so he's not as dark red. He's more of like a, a brick kind of red color um, with a lot more of like the browns throughout him. But anyways, big difference from baby to adult and not just in size. So, uh, pretty pretty cool, pretty neat. And I'm hoping, I have a, a grow up male that we've shown before that I'm gonna be breeding back to her. And hopefully they'll produce some even better reds in the future. Okay, next one. Uh, <laughs> she's a little riled up and it was Spencer, so. Uh, anyways, this is in a xanthic patternless, a balum. And she is, yeah, she's feeling pretty fiery today. But as you guys can maybe hopefully see, if I can get her to like come back up here a little bit more without getting totally chomped. Um, here we go. That's a decent view. All right, so definitely still gray and has some of that azanthic look. She might actually be in the blue right now. She might be, I don't know, hard to tell. But uh, she kind of does have a lot of browns also throughout her. Uh, but uh, anyway, still definitely a xanthic. Um, not nearly what a normal uh, patternless would look like. But uh, let's show you an adult version and uh, hopefully the adult will cooperate a little bit more um, than this little girl. And uh, they, they do change a little bit as they grow. They, they do get, well, Here's the funny thing is I have like two um, and they look completely different than each other, but they're supposed to be the same thing. So maybe I'll pull out that younger one too and then show you the older one and uh, let you guys see that Isanthe can vary actually, um, unless it's something else. But anyway, I'll, I'll show you. Okay, this is that younger, oh my, that was fast. Um, that younger older one that I was talking about. So the crazy thing is, is that he's supposed to just be an Isanthe patternless. Um, but I am not super convinced that that is all he is. I actually have this feeling, uh, well, I Hypo has popped up uh, recently in uh, these guys, I think. And I'm wondering if this guy is actually a ghost because of how light he is. But uh, anyways, once I get him big enough, he'll be one of my breeders. He might actually breed this upcoming season and then maybe we'll be able to figure it out. But no matter what, he is a xanthic patternless, um, just maybe there's hypo involved in here. We'll find out. <laughs> I'll show you a real xanthic patternless next. Okay, here's an xanthic patternless that I know is like just all xanthic patternless for sure. Uh, this is a three-year-old female I've been growing up. And as you can see, like she is dark, really dark. Most of the browns, well, she still is brown, but I feel like way more of it turned to the gray color um, that like you kind of know for Azanthics. And so anyways, um, really pretty. They don't really keep uh, 
obviously they're patternless, right? So there's not really any pattern. She did have a little bit by her tail when she was uh, when she hatched, and she still does. So most of the time, if they have pattern as a baby, they're probably going to keep it as an adult. And she is just going all over the place. But anyways, as you can see, uh, they do uh, vary. That other male I showed you guys, I'm really not sure that he's just exanthic patternless. But even my uh, older, my, I do have one other male. Um, he's my adult. I'm not pulling him out today. But uh, he's dark like this, although I'd say he's a little bit lighter. She's even darker. Um, and then I'll probably have more someday. But uh, but anyway, so that's a pretty good comparison. Um, in my opinion, I think they're just going to get darker. So at least for the Balam line. Miami line, though, I don't really have much experience with. So keep in mind, this is Balam Azanthic and not Miami. Um, I'm still working on... Uh, getting Miami line uh, patternless going in this room. So it's a project I have, we're working on it. So anyways. All right, okay, next up is one of me and Spencer's, both of ours, uh, one of our favorite morphs in this room. Um, and this is a ghost. So this is a Miami line, and this is a Stillwater line for the hypo. And uh, this uh, one in particular is actually just outstanding. Uh, so not all babies look like this one. This one has, like such, oh, I, I kept this one, he's mine. Um, but he has got such gorgeous saddles that are like nice and thick, but the spacing between the saddles is thicker than uh, some of the other ones that I produced this year. And so that's part of why I held him back. I actually, he came out of like one of the breedings from um, more of like my high yellow line for the Stillwater stuff. And so I actually think that that's what's contributing to this look is it's because it's from like the higher yellow still our hypos um, instead of just whatever's been mixed in before. And so anyway, that's what I think is playing, um, well coming into play here, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And so I'm pretty excited to see how he turns out as an adult. He was easily the lightest baby of that whole clutch. And uh, I've never really hatched one like that before because that was the first time I was breeding the, that high yellow line. And so I was really excited to see him pop out. Another reason why I held him back is because I want to see if that is what's, what's happening here and, uh, and produce more like this. So I guess also what I was saying is that I haven't raised one that has looked like this as a baby yet. So it'll be interesting to see exactly how he turns out. But in terms of just uh, another Miami Stillwater ghost, I do have one and I'll go grab her right now. Okay, I actually forgot, I do have this other one. Um, this one's actually sold already, but uh, this was, this is more of like what a lot of mine have been turning out looking like. Um, as you can see, it's completely different than that male I was holding back. So the contrast is different. The saddles are closer together. Um, everything about it is like a darker shade. Um, and there's way more like black contrast up on the neck. Um, anyway, so this is what I've basically been producing out of my ghosts and stuff. Um, which is why I was so excited to see that other male and I held on to him. I also held on to a female that's pretty similar to that male. So I have a pair of them that I'm going to be raising up and seeing how they turn out. But anyways, so this is more of what the adult uh, looks like as a baby. So now I will go grab her. All right, okay, this is uh, one of the adult ghost females. Um, this is, sorry, this is actually, I think, the mother of that one, uh, that second baby I just showed. Um, and as you can see, big difference actually from baby to adult. So as you can see, big difference here. Uh, look at all the contrast that comes in up on the neck. That's a lot of like that still water influence coming in, um, which is part of why I love these ghosts so much is because of that black contrast with the white up there. Uh, it's so cool. So <laughs> I love these guys. Uh, but anyways, um, mostly though, they do keep a lot of that great contrast in color. Um, I do expect some will probably stay whiter um, than this one, this one. You, you see like some kind of yellowing. Uh, but really stays like great contrast between, you know, the blacks and the grays and, and the whites. Um, and so anyways, really one of the fun morphs that I'm working with and we have some uh, cool projects planned with the ghosts. All right, okay, next up we decided to shift gears away from the, whoa, the bull snakes for just a minute and I'll show you guys a Sonoran. So this right here is actually a Christmas Mountain Sonoran. And uh, she's feeling a little, 
a little spunky right now. So, um, and that's pretty typical of the babies, of course. So, anyways, uh, this is just kind of what they look like as babies. Uh, they do vary a lot also in like their coloration. Um, some are more yellow than this even. And uh, some are more brown, some have more reds. Anyway, it, it does vary a ton. But anyways, this is just one of the babies from this year. And uh, we'll pull out an adult and we'll show you one of the adults. Uh, we actually do have a, a trio of adults that we are looking to move out. So um, if you guys are interested, uh, these guys, they're really super pretty. And the adults are even better looking, uh, you'll see in just a minute. But uh, it could be a great way for you guys to get into pits and produce your first ones, um, even next year. So anyways, um, let's go grab one of those and show you. All right, okay, this is one of those adult Christmas mountains. Um, this is one of the females. Uh, this is one of the ones available. Um, and she, I don't actually know if she sired that baby, but um, sired, if she produced that baby, but she might've, she might've been that one. So uh, anyways, as you can see, like they really do mature and get so much color. She's got a lot of black contrast up on her neck, which I think is really cool and unique. Um, it's part of why I, really like the way that she turned out and then like all this red coming in down on her tail um i have some that have more red but she actually did get a lot which is a really pretty look for them um <laughs> and uh she's she's a big girl so um oh what is she i don't know she's probably close to i don't know six yeah maybe she's at least five feet um so anyways these guys are pretty impressive they do get rather big um, people that say bull snakes get the biggest, it's really not true. Uh, the Sonorans can get really big also. Um, and so that can be really fun to work with these guys. Uh, only reason I'm getting rid of them is because I need space for some other projects that I'm trying to work on that are like very special um, and unique. And so it, it's sad to see these guys go because the Christmas mountains I think were, gosh, I don't know, like one of the very first snakes that I bought. Um, and so they're kind of near and dear to me a little bit, um, but uh, it could be a really fun project for somebody else. And so I really think that they could do great for you guys. Uh, she actually produced a whopping 20 eggs that were all fertile this year. So, um, you know, they're ready to go. And so did the other female. Both females actually produced 20 eggs each. Uh, so there, there was a lot. Uh, but anyways, these guys are awesome. They're fantastic. And uh, yeah, anyway, let's move on to the next one. All right, and last but not least for this video is the tigers. So, uh, you know, the tigers are relatively new uh, to the bull snake market. Um, well, not really relatively new, but uh, it's something new that we are working with. And uh, this one is just a nice red tiger um, female. And uh, as you can see, it has good color uh, already, um, but uh, this one isn't one of the bloods. Um, the bloods all have a lot of attitude, and so I uh, didn't manage to grab one of those. Um, but, anyways, uh, maybe we could show them just mom of this, I guess. Sure. Or I could just show the big one. You guys want to see the big one? I'll show you the big one. Uh, it's funner anyway. But anyway, so here's just a nice uh, red tiger that we produced this year. And uh, we're just really excited to keep working with these guys. But uh, yeah, let me go grab the adult because that's pretty fun. Okay, so the biggest uh, tiger actually is straight in the blue right now, so she looks terrible. Um, just not right color, and, and that's part of what we're looking at here. So this is actually mom of that baby we just showed. Um, she's the smallest of my three females, so not like as super impressive, but check out that color difference um, from baby to adult. They do still just like the reds, obviously, um, gain a lot of color as they grow, and... Uh, as you can see, just such a striking pattern. You really see where they kind of get the name Tiger from, looking at that. Is she good? Is that yeah. better? <laughs> anyway, so uh, she's just a nice red tiger. Um, there was no surprises that popped out of her in terms of like the white side and hypos and albinos that we ended up getting. Um, but as you can see, she is still just a gorgeous example of what a tiger looks like. Um, and we're excited to get her to produce again next year. So anyways, if you guys want to see some other comparisons, just like drop them in the comments below and maybe we can do another comparison video later. Uh, all the adults are about to go down for brumation. Um, so 
the comparison video might have to wait just a little bit, but um, we're happy to share with you guys. So if there's specific stuff that you wanna see, uh, how that really matures, I know I don't have every example in my room, um, but happy to hear you guys' uh, thoughts and ideas. Um, and if you guys have any other thoughts and ideas for videos throughout um, winter, uh, cause all the adults are going down, so we might have to get a little creative. So if there's topics you guys want us to cover, things like that, let us know. Uh, otherwise, make sure that you guys like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time.